Police and demonstrators clashed outside the parliament building of the Georgian separatist region of Abkhazia as tensions flared over a proposed pact that would allow Russians to buy property in the region. Most of Abkhazia broke away from Georgia in fighting that ended in 1993, and Georgia lost control of the rest of the territory in the short war with Russia in 2008. Russia recognizes Abkhazia as an independent country, but many Abkhazians are concerned that the region of about 245,000 people is just a client state of Moscow. Hundreds of protesters gathered at the fence outside the parliament, which was to consider ratification of the agreement under which Russians could buy apartments in Abkhazia, whose mountains and Black Sea beaches are popular with Russian tourists. Opponents say the agreement would drive up property prices and boost Russian dominance of the region. The parliament session was later postponed, but protesters remained at the fence, then used a truck to break through. Police blocked them from entering the building as the protesters threw rocks and eggs, then tried to push them out of the territory and fired tear gas, according to Russian and Georgian news reports. There were no immediate reports of arrests or injuries. The arrest of five opposition figures at a similar demonstration on Monday set off wide protests the next day in which bridges leading to the regional capital of Sukhumi were blocked. In the Kursk region, the Russian army carries out daily attacks on the positions of Ukrainian forces. At the same time, the enemy steps on the same rake as it acts on the basis of incorrect intelligence. As a result, this leads to numerous losses in the ranks of Putin's army. A week after the start of a new counter-offensive in Kursk region, with the aim of driving out Ukrainian forces from there, the enemy is suffering staggering losses, but has not achieved any major successes, Forbes reports. During this period, Putin's army only managed to gain a foothold in Pogrebki, but this is very little consolation against the backdrop of heavy losses along the western and northern sides of the Kursk salient. Experts say there is more than one problem here. The fact is that there are not so many roads on the northern and western salients, so the enemy has to attack along the same route. It is also unclear who and how provides information to the Russian army about the location of the Ukrainian armed forces. As a result, all attacks by Putin's army are predictable. This leads to large losses, said the operator of the Ukrainian armed forces drones Kriegsforscher. In a week of fighting in the area of Zeleny Shlyak, 
He has already counted 88 units of destroyed enemy armored vehicles. Just November the 12th, 11 Russian vehicles from the 51st Airborne Regiment, as well as the 155th and the 810th Marine Brigades of the Russian Armed Forces were destroyed. The enemy attacks every day. The Russians are confronted by forces of the 17th, 41st, 47th and 95th Brigades of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. They meet Putin's army with artillery, mines, drones, tanks and missiles. A striking example of the inaccuracy of the enemy intelligence is the events of November the 7th. On that day, the occupiers from the 810th Brigade in their new BTR-82s were destroyed at close range by Ukrainian defenders. It is possible that the local commanders assured their superiors from above that all roads to Pogrebki were allegedly controlled by Russian forces. It is logical that after such information, the Russian Defense Ministry gave the order to attack the village. However, the occupiers did not control the road and did not even clear this section of the front. In general, deliberate misinformation of the general staff by the command of the 810th Brigade has become a common practice, said Ukrainian Armed Forces serviceman Romanov. By passing false information up their chain of command and then passing false orders back, Russian commanders in Kursk are setting their troops up for bloody tactical failures. This means they are likely to suffer catastrophic losses regardless of the battle's final outcome. The main advantage of the Russians, as it was in all wars, is their numbers. Now in Kursk region, 20 to 30,000 Ukrainian defenders are fighting with 50,000 of Putin Kim's Arya. The most important thing is that the Ukrainian armed forces know about the attacks of the Russian armed forces. They know how, where and when they come. All that is required from the Ukrainian forces is to lay mines, set up artillery, launch drones and wait for a new wave of attacks. A Russian rescue team raced against the clock on Thursday to save an orca that had been beached in shallow water of the Okhotsk Sea in countries far east. The young female cetacean was found on the shore near the settlement of Ustivoy in the Kamchatka Peninsula, around 6,500 kilometers east of Moscow. The marine mammal couldn't breathe, and its skin started to crack due to drying. Russia's emergency ministry brought an excavator to the site hooked slings under the beached orca and transported it into the water. Rescuers poured water over the killer whale to hydrate its skin and stayed with it until the tide turned and it could swim away in deep enough water. Last month emergency ministry workers and volunteers saved a family of two adults and two young orcas on the peninsula. The orca, a toothed whale from the dolphin family, is a predator that eats seals and fish, has a global population estimated at 50,000 and is found in almost all of the world's seas.